Is it hot where you are? Stinking, sweating, muggy height? Well, here in Australia, it's winter time, which means winter frosts. And it is chilly this morning while we get ready to feed the horses. Isn't that right, Lil? How pretty is that with all the crystallized icicles on that spider web? They're trying to stay warm in the sunshine and don't want to come down to the shade. Look how cold Here they come. So it was about minus one degree Celsius this morning when I got up at seven. So we've got Bicky on the far left, the Palomino, Jimmy leading them and Perry the patchy pony in the middle there in the stripy rug. Breakfast time guys. Morning. Come Becky. We couldn't love a face like that. Now that the hay's out, now it's time to make sure they've got water. And this is the tool I use. Look at all the ice crystals, because that is frozen solid. See, it's not too bad this morning. So all you guys that are hot, I'll trade you. <laughs> Bring back summer. What are you doing? Puss, puss. Lily. Lil. Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Mel from Patchy Pony Stitcher. And as you can see from the beginning of my video, we are in the thick of the cold season. It's not quite winter yet, but <laughs> it sure feels like it. So morning chores mean rugging up. Welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're returning, I thank you very much for coming back each month to see what my progress is. Today is the 29th of June and this is number floss tube 43, nearly at the 50. Actually, this is my magic floss tube because I'm 43. So um, actually, I might even get a double um, magic floss tube because next month I turn 44 and we'll be on floss tube 44 so double whammy with the golden floss tube number. It's been a little bit over a month since I've spoken to you and shown you all my progress and updates. I must admit I've been a little bit more inclined to do more stitching than I have thought about doing a video but I've got lots to share with you today and lots of progress about and also what I've been up to in the crafty world. So let's get started. So I do have a, a finished object, a fully finished object, some whips, my giveaway winner and a new giveaway through the video um, and some plans. So we'll start with my fully finished object, which is my FFO. And also, this is going to be the chart that I'm announcing the winner for, which is Pale Pumpkins by Shakespeare's Peddler. So this is the stitched piece. And in the, the pattern, it was a little, it's called Pale Pumpkins, which um, I may have shown you the before I finished stitching. I haven't quite got the circle there, unfortunately. Um, but I did change them more to colours that we have here in Australia for pumpkins. I don't think I've ever seen a white pumpkin here in Australia that's common anyway. But it was turned into a pin cushion and I just got this little candle stick holder thing at Spotlight and I painted it. I need, I want to get some wax on it to sort of antique it a bit, but I just haven't had time to, to go looking. And yeah, so I just did a, a little pin cushion on the top and that just sits with my autumn decor so I was really happy with that turn how that turned out and it is what I had envisaged it to be so the height the size of the candle stick holder 
I was really, really happy with that. So this will be the chart that I'm announcing the winner for today. I do have another fully finished object, but it's not stitching related. Um, I went into a quilting shop looking for some threads or fabric, found what I wanted, but also found lots of other little goodies. So I have had my first little dabble into quilting because I found this gorgeous little kit for a pin cushion. And it says on it, stitch with your heart, sew with your soul. But I just loved the patchwork because they had them already made up on the counter. Um, and everything came in it, all the pieces, the fab, the DMC, all the fabric, the interfacing. The only thing I needed to add into it was this, um, the fibre fill. But I really, oh, and the buttons, of course. But I really thought it was so cute and it's just something there to sit sit on the sideboard with my other stitching bits and pieces and this is the first time I've actually done any embroidery is it so I traced the words on with a fine pencil and then just stitched over it freehand which was I actually enjoyed it I didn't think I would enjoy this bit I thought it would look messy but I'm really happy with how it came out as per the pattern and then I added some buttons. The only bit that I'm not happy with is the seam on the end, but I'll put a little heart button, but you don't see that anyway, unless you pick it up and have a look. But I was really happy with how this sweet little pin cushion um, came out. And while I was there, I also saw another little kit that I liked, but, but it had to go on order. So I'll show you that in my haul. Not that I will be, don't think I'll be a quilter like making big quilts, but I certainly enjoy having a little bit of a, a project with a bit of difference, just a crafty project, just to mix things up a bit. So the next piece that I'm going to show you is my finished object. Um, and this is Autumn Squirrel by the Blue Flower. So I finished this piece. Now this is on 14 count tea dyed Ada using DMC and Victoria Motto. Unfortunately, I didn't get it finished for autumn, so this will become a fully finished object uh, for, I'll probably do it when I do a whole heap um, at one time, because there's no urgency to get this one finished now that it's, uh, we're about to hit autumn, um, sorry, autumn, about to hit winter. So I've been also working on his, uh, the other blue flower, the winter squirrel which I will show you that one now. So that was my autumn squirrel. Whoops. So winter squirrel, I've been working on and using this one for a lot of prompts. Now this one is on a 28 count uh, even weave. And this is where we are up to with this guy. So I will show you the picture of the finished so this is what it will look like when it's completed. And again, this is where I'm up to at the moment. And this was just using the DMC called for, no, actually, no, this all, these ones, oh no, it does have a DMC conversion. So I've used the DMC conversion and I've just hand dyed this white even weave myself to try and replicate something similar, which I'm quite happy with the result uh, for the called for. So I've been using that one for a, quite a few prompts and very happy with how that's coming along. Actually, per, for the outcome of this one, then I do the winter squirrel, uh, the autumn squirrel, because I like the colouring better with the grey and the dark grey. So that's the blue flowers winter squirrel. The next project I'm going to show you, so I've worked on more than five, but I'm only going to show you five because some don't have as much progress as others. So I'm going to be showing you the five that I have done the most on. Um, okay, now I've been doing Cross Stitch Camp, which is the brainchild of Sherry at Colorado Stitcher. Um, it's an online event, an online summer camp, which is lots of fun and it's good for us here in Australia and everyone around the world to be able to participate in. So what the idea is, is that there's three months, June, July, August, and you pick a project, begin on the first of those months and try and complete it by the end of that month and then begin a new project for the following month. And each one has a prompt. So the prompt for June was to 
what to choose a project that you've been inspired by now i've seen so many people doing prairie schoolers and i've never done one myself um not that they're too daunting i just hadn't got around to it but i did have this one in my stash santa rides and i particularly bought it for this one so i've been inspired to do a prairie schooler santa not the traditional prairie schooler santa but one of these santas so i began doing my prairie now i didn't choose the same colors that they were called for either so i'll show you my color choice so these i've got a silks for you uh, an anchor another anchor and another silks for you which is variegated if you can see the variegation and then just a white now these floss cards I make from cards that I receive from stitchy friends, particularly Natalie. She sends me lots of cards, so thank you, Natalie. And I make good use of the the cards by um, by turning them into floss card holders, and then I get and they've even got the special notes on the back. <laughs> but it's uh, a good way to sort of just remember how. Um, how nice it is to have stitchy friends around the world that send you cards and a, and a hello message. So they're my threads for my Prairie School Santa rides. And I must say, this using the silk on this um, even weave was just so delightful. So I have finished my Santa rides. It's on a huge bit of fabric. So here we go. So this is on a 32 even weave that I, again, hand dyed myself because I didn't want white because I wanted the the uh, variegated threads to really pop, which I'm so pleased because that variegation you can see is just beautiful. And yeah, it is supposed to be in the chart. It is supposed to be a different from the white in the Santa's suit so i'm really happy with how he turned out so i finished him uploaded my picture and then i'm like hmm what will i do with the chart i the others don't really speak to me except for the reindeer i quite like him and my thought was that i would turn this in to a, when i first started i thought oh, i'll turn it into a, a pillow or um, a little ornament but the more, I, while I, the more I thought about it and the more I thought about, well, I would like to stitch the others. I've still got quite a bit of thread, some thread left. Um, not, a, not a huge amount, but enough to, um, to think about. And I really enjoyed it. It happened really quickly. So I thought, well, I will do the reindeer. And then I also quite like the train as well. But I thought, well, what am I going to do? with these because they're not really small enough to go as an ornament and then I thought do I do them all and have like a little dough bowl of them but no I've what I've decided to do is the three so I'm going to do so I've done him I'm currently get working on this one and I'm going to flip this one around so it faces the other way so they're all facing in the same direction and I'm going to make a drum and this is where I'm up to with the train. So I've just made a start on him. So using exactly the same colours. And because they're all the same height and dimension, I think it's going to look really sweet as a drum. I just hope that I've got enough room at the end of the train to put the reindeer in. Otherwise, I'll do the reindeer and just have two seams in my drum. I don't care. But I thought that will look so sweet. And then have some little Christmas pins. I really like drums at the moment. Every time I pick up something, I'm like, ooh, can I turn this into a drum? So that is Santa Rides by Prairie Schooler, my first Prairie Schooler project. Okay, the next project, let's pop that down there. The next project I'm going to show you is my Hawk Run Hollow progress. So this is where I was before with Hawk Run Hollow. Now I'm going to need to take off the edge of the Q-snap. And this is where I'm up to now. So this is Farms of Hawkron Hollow. I'm up to block 10. I've got 11 and 12 to do and then I'm complete. And this languished for a little bit, but 
Thanks to Pam at Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. No. I'm going to have to pause and check. I was right. Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. So Pam has set up a Zoom meet but, um, every second Thursday and it's really helped me get back excited about this project again because I'm seeing other people work on farm, uh, not on farms, on other Hawker on Hollows and it's just great to have stitchy chats um, about, about these charts. So I finished the water in the duck pond and it's a nice variegated thread. I've started on the barn and I've still got the willow tree to do. So this one is very handy for lots of prompts in the Daily 30 group and also in Semi Sane. So I've got a fair bit of work into that one and really only two to go. Now I was um, on one of the Zoom groups, I was talking to Pam, uh, no Patty, sorry Patty, and she showed her Hawk Run Hello made into a quilt. And I really, really liked that idea. Now, mine is landscape, so it goes long ways. Have I got a... Have I got the... Yes. So, mine is set up exactly like this. And I always thought I was going to frame it. So, this is the one I'm up to. So, I've completed all of these guys and just got those two to go. If you haven't been to my channel before. And I really liked the quilt idea, not necessarily as a usable quilt, but more as a wall hanging. So I thought, and then you just quilt in between the, in between all the borders. So I am really seriously thinking about turning this into a little, maybe a lap quilt or something. I don't know. I'll have to wait till it's finished, but I really, really liked that idea. And it's uh, got me thinking about how I'm going to, finish this particular guy up. So this is done on a 14 count, no 16 count tea dyed Ada that I really grunged up because I wanted it to look like a, a hessian potato sack or farm sack that would, you'd find in the shed of a farm. I'm using the DMC threads on it and it's close but yet so far before it's finished. These, these blocks are very deceiving on on how long they actually take to do. So that is my Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. So I'll just pop my Q-snap back on and my cable tie, the magnetic cable ties. If you haven't used these, they're well worth um, having a look at if you've got lots of fabric. I find that they hold the fabric really not, <laughs> it flies off. Um, they hold the fabric nice and, um, nice and in place not taut but in place where you'd like it okay so the last project that i'm going to show you that i've been working on today is a new start and this is snowy christmas by ori tm so last time i showed you my finished ori so i had to start a new one and this chart is on loan to me from Deb Wilson. So Deb, I finally got a start on it. Um, it's long awaited start. So thank you. And I will get this back to you hopefully at Mittagong in October. So I'm hoping to get this all finished by, that's my goal. So I can return this chart in person to Deb. So this is the chart that I took to Adelaide for a girls weekend with Mitch Stitch, Michelle, Pennington Terrace, Manda and Animal Instinct Kelly. We all got together and had a little stitchy weekend up in Haundorf, which is a German village and just amazing. If you are follow me on Instagram, you would have seen some photos that we took there and, and we had lots of fun, lots of wineries locally. So we had lots of drinking wines and cheese eating and stitching. So it was heavenly and the weather was amazing. And we had a ball. So we all brought, I brought, I took three projects with me. This is really the only one I touched. I really enjoy stitching on this, but I also hate it at the same time. But I can't stop and I can't restart because I just love how it's coming out. Now, the reason I hate it is because the fabric is so loose in the weave and there's really thin 
threads and there's really thick threads and I make lots of mistakes because sometimes I accidentally go over a thin thread not realizing it's even there and then because it's Quaker style it has to be exact there's no fudging with Quake well I did fudge but it ended up being lots more work than what it really should have been so I'm going to take this one out of a Q snap and this is where I've got to so I've actually done the full bottom of this so this is the complete so I'm, this is going back up I'll just quickly show you again so I'm now this is the snowflake here on the edge so I've done these bottom motifs that reindeer and the bottom so it's not a huge chart compared to Alice and Oz which is great um, so if I give you a close up I don't know if you can see No, not really, um, how loose this fabric is. Now, I hand dyed this myself. Um, I did have a darker fabric, but I, it just seemed a little bit too dark to have on display at Christmas. So I hand dyed this myself, and I haven't done anything as dark as this, and I didn't rinse it. And do you know what happens when you don't rinse? It comes off on your hands. So when I work on this, I get blue hands. Um, now, fortunately, the thread doesn't get blue. So I'm using white DMC or Blanc, Blanc, Blanc white DMC Etoile. So it's got some sparkle in there because I was going to use a sparkly fabric. But then when, once I decided to use the Etoile, I decided against that. So I'm really pleased with how this it has turned out and it's it's really enjoyable watching it come together but when you make a mistake and you have to rip out it's really frustrating and this is probably one of the projects I've done the most ripping this is the motif that I fudged when we were at Adelaide the lighting wasn't fantastic inside so I just kept fudging and fudging until I finished <laughs> and um, because I got sick of ripping things out but since I've been home and I've had this on my Lowry with my good light I haven't made as many mistakes which is super but it's very hard I occasionally I have to take out two or three stitches because I've realized I've missed that really fine thread um, in the cross stitches and I've gone over one too many so I love how this is coming along now the red that I'm using so I this is called for, but I didn't have the called fours. So Ori uses Gast Gentle Arts on these. And um, I've got a subscription to Weeks Dye Works through a stitch in time. So I wanted to make use of what I did have. So the red that I'm using is Aztec Red and it's got a little bit of variegation through there but I love the reindeer he's got super variegation through him and I'm using bright leaf now on the floss tag there oh goodness now on the floss tag there it doesn't show as much variegation and when I started stitching him I was so wrapped that he had lots because I think that gives a little bit of interest to the piece and then Krynik, or it's not Krynik, it's uh, Treasure Braid that I'm using for the gold. And then the white, or well, the Blanc Etoile. If you haven't used Etoile, it's actually a little bit fluffy. I don't know if you can see. Oh, now I've bumped you. It's a little bit fluffy to as it looks so that's just a single strand there but it actually is very easy to stitch with compared to Crinex and Treasure Braid and I just love the um, effects I've used it a couple of times now and every time that I've used it I've been super pleased so Deb hopefully my goal of October is not unrealistic and I will be able to return your chart to you in person so Ori TM Snowy Christmas. I don't know if this chart's still available because Deb picked it up at um, a stash, like a, um, a D stash online, and she beat me like by seconds. And 
um, that's how she knew that I was keen to stitch it. So she kindly lent it to me to, to borrow, which was very generous of her. Okay, so that is my whips in progress, my whips, works in progress. I'm gonna pop in my giveaway winner here for the Pale Pumpkins chart. Okay, let's pick a giveaway winner. So the keyword was vegetable and we'll see who won. Neat and not by the sea. So what was their f vegetable? Oh, that's right, I can't even um, pronounce it, but it's a, a Spanish vegetable. So congratulations, ladies. If you can email me below and I'll get this off to New Zealand for you. Congratulations, Catherine. I'll send you that one out to you as soon as I receive your email. So the giveaway that I'm gonna be doing for this video is the Nativity Berry from Erica Michaels. So with my cross stitch camp, actually, let me go back a bit. So I'll tell you how I decided on this one. Uh, so with the cross stitch camp, I've got a few, like I've got a bag of projects that are kitted up ready to go. And I choose two out of those. And then I've been putting it on Instagram to make so to have my followers make the choice for me as what I'm going to pick. So how I pick out of my bag of up, um, kitted up projects is I use my tiny decision wheel. And when it comes out, comes up, I pull it out. And when this one came up, I have stitched this before. I stitched it for a gift. But I had kept it thinking I would do it again for myself. But we are not overly religious um, and my Christmas tree is more red, green and gold. Whereas this is, I suppose I could do that on green, but it would then take away the night sky. So I decided that I would not stitch this one again. So that is why it's going to be up for a giveaway. So it is a second hand chart. I have used it. So the key word for this one is going to be strawberry. So put the word strawberry into a sentence and then I will use the random comment picker next time I film and pick who will win Erica Michaels um, Nativity Berry. So what did I pick for Cross Stitch Camp um, for July? So I had two charts, I put them on my Instagram story and the winner was Rocking Horse Holiday. So this is by Artful Offerings. So I will be stitching. Now this is quite big to try and do in a month, but it's not that big also because a lot of there's a lot of vacant space on here. So I think the horse is going to be the biggest part of the stitch and hopefully I'll be able to get the rest done. Now I haven't done an alphabet like this in a long, I don't think I've done one yet since I've returned to stitching. And I like how people change it up a bit. Now my initials are M and L, so I will swap the M and L around in the alphabet and also make them a different colour um, as part of my signing off for, and you know, making it a little bit unique as well. So I'm looking forward to that one. I only got this one at Mother's Day from one of my boys, so it's a fel relatively new chart to my stash and I was pleased that it came up and I have got a range of threads that I have picked so I've got some silks for you and a week's dye work weeks weeks dye works that's right um that I've chosen it's only got four colors plus a cream so I've just got to add a cream into that and these are the this is the fabric that I'm going to use now this is another piece this is the same color this is how, um, this is the colour of the blue one that I used for snowy Christmas. So I don't know if you can see the difference in the threads, but I'm going to have another crack at it because I quite, it's not too bad at home with the Lowry stand and, but it's, I think it's quite a cheap fabric that I got from Spotlight, but I quite like the colouring of those on that so that's just that's just how it came that's the color so that is my planned new start for July I don't plan to do any other new starts unless there is a prompt that I cannot fill with the rest of my whips <laughs> which that shouldn't happen because I've got about 30 whips on the go 
So what else? I don't have a lot of haul. I haven't really been buying, but I did receive my silks for you from, I won a $50 voucher at the, I think it was March retreat for silks for you in the raffle. And this is the silk, the silk that I chose was a hank of this lovely brown. Um, now it's not overly variegated, but it's lovely and shiny. So I want to do a, um, like a sampler maybe in this silk. So I did need to spend 50, so that just came under 50. So I also picked up a single skein of PR7. Oh, okay, if you just, if you're interested, that one was PR120. Oh, excuse me, sorry, I just had a sneeze. So this is PR76, and it's a lovely yellowy cream pinky variegated skein of silk. And I also got a bits bag, but I've already demolished that and used it within some projects. So that's um, a, a small oddments that they um, you can purchase. So that's my stitchy. Um, oh, actually, here's what's left of the bits bag. So there's skeins of oddment. Oh, I've just tipped it all over my lap. Skeins of oddment. So we don't know what colours and so forth they are. But I also got a bits and I think there were 10 in there and I've already pulled some of those out to go into projects look at that pink isn't that gorgeous so that's my bits bag now my other piece of haul was from the quilty shop that I told you about before I saw these on the counter already already made up and I thought they were so gorgeous and cute so I ordered this as a full kit so it comes with all the bits and pieces, quite a thick package. So when the time take takes and I feel like doing something other than stitching, see those, all those bees are appliqued and the flowers are appliqued on. So it's a lot of little delicate work, but also looks like a lot of fun. So that will be in my upcoming future, especially over winter when you just want to sit down and, and work from woe to go on a project. So looking forward to getting that done. And that's by Hatched and Patched. If you're a quilter or crafter and you'd like to do uh, something different, it does say quick and easy. <laughs> Not for me because I'm a beginner. <laughs> Um, now, the other thing I wanted to show you, and I was lucky enough, thank you, Liz, or Beth, sorry, um, for the giveaway from your channel. I'm lucky enough to receive one of Emma, Emma Condon's um, Cross Stitch for the Earth book. Beautiful projects. And going to say a big hello to my niece in Queensland. Bella, um, there's beautiful projects in this. I want to show you. I think she would like some of these whale ones, like that one especially. My sister's doing a whale at the moment. But there's some beautiful projects in this that are all about um, nature and the environment and so forth. And right up my sister's alley I think but this is a beautiful beautiful book so thank you Beth for sending that out to me and um, I'm really appreciate it and I'm going to start work well I've got to kit something up first of all and choose which one I think the one that t tickles my fancy the most was this one the earth the earth has music for those who listen I really, really like that one there. So I think that will be my first pick. Let's see, Bella, I think that one, you might like that one there too. She's only just starting to cross stitch and she's still working on her first piece and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished piece, Bella. So I think you better get stitching so you can show me at Christmas time. So... That is all from me today. Um, 
I'm fairly sure. I can't think of anything else that I had to show or talk about. But if I do, I'll just add it to my next video. So take care, guys. And for those in the heat, stay cool. And for those of us here in Australia, stay warm. I'll see you next time. Bye.